What I've been talking about so far are values, decisions, actions, and reactions. But there are also interactions. Problems arise in interpersonal relationships when people are out of balance. This diagram represents two people who come together who are imbalanced. The person on top is someone who is imbalanced toward the mental side and away from emotions. And the person on the bottom is someone who is imbalanced toward the emotional side. The old saying, opposites attract, is actually true in many cases. I'm sure many of us can think of examples of relationships in which one person is very rational and non-emotional, and the other person is very emotional and seemingly irrational. What happens in this situation is people see in each other what they don't have in themselves, and by getting together, they kind of complete each other's circles. These people can interact in the physical and spiritual realms, but when the person on top wants to be rational, there is conflict because the person on the bottom has to operate outside of their circle. And the opposite is also true. When the person on bottom wants to be emotional, there is conflict because the person on top has to operate outside his or her circle. The reason there is conflict is because they are constantly trying to pull each other outside of their comfort zones. Oftentimes, these people will remain together because even though there is a lot of conflict, each person provides for the other the aspects of life that are not developed within themselves. In an ideal situation, both people will develop their wheels fully before trying to start a relationship or a marriage. In this way, they can interact equally on all four levels and provide each other balance through harmony rather than conflict. When you look at interactions, you can look at people interacting like this. This is an example of a superficial interaction. People can interact superficially within any of the four aspects. An example of this might be in an academic or a professional environment where people are interacting, but what they are really doing is projecting themselves. If you recall, the people are at the center of the wheel and they are projecting themselves into one realm or another. It's almost as if people have an arm's distance projection of who they are and they hold up a mask. And people wear different masks in different situations depending on who they are interacting with. What happens when people are interacting with loved ones or family members is that the interaction becomes like this. And they are interacting at the center of who they are. This is an example of a true interaction because it is at the center of the wheel and the people are free to interact on all four levels. Whereas in a superficial interaction, it is the projection of one person meeting the projection of the other. Oftentimes, people refer to differences in communication between Indian and non-Indian people. Non-Indian communication is often referred to as linear because there is a distinct beginning and a distinct end to the written or the spoken word. Often, these are referred to as an introduction and a conclusion. In circular communication, there does not have to be a distinct beginning or a distinct end to an idea. This can be thought of in many ways. Oftentimes, circular communication can be thought of as speaking from the other person's perspective. Or, the circular pattern may exist in the words themselves. Chief Joseph, a Nez Perce leader who lived in the late 1800s, made a famous quote in which he decided to no longer fight the U.S. troops who were invading his people's land. His speech is a beautiful example of circular communication. I am tired of fighting. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My people, some of them, have run away to the hills and have no blankets, no food. No one knows where they are, perhaps freezing to death. I want to have time to look for my children. 
and see how many of them I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs, I am tired. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. The first part of his speech describes the physical state of his tribe and the actions that had led up to this point. He summarizes the tribe's physical condition in the words, I am tired. From here, he moves to the south part of the wheel, where he deals with the reactions and emotions generated from the physical realm. Here, he states, my heart is sick and sad. These emotions feed back into his feeling of a broken spirit and compromised values. When he says, from where the sun now stands, he is speaking from a spiritual and value perspective, which form the basis of his decision. I will fight no more forever. The medicine wheel is a very old symbol that has been used effectively for over 10,000 years. The wheel also has many applications in the world today, including modern medicine and current lifestyles. We have touched upon some of these applications in our discussion today. The elders tell us to keep harmony within nature and within ourselves. The medicine wheel gives us directions for attaining this balance. Listen to your emotions and be aware of your values. This will strengthen your decisions and actions and allow you to live in harmony with the world around you. Aho, pilamiya yolo, mitakuye oyasin.